Do you want a super cool weather display for your shack? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Recently, I was kind of thumbing through some various projects that I had cataloged in the past, trying to figure out what I might want to do with an extra Raspberry Pi 3 laying around. And I came across a really cool weather display to run in the shack. So I jumped over to Amazon and started taking a look at their monitors and came across this one. It's a 7-inch display, which I thought would work perfect for this particular project. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Raspberry Pi and I'll show you guys how to put this together for your shack. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so we'll be working with a clean build of Bullseye. 32-bit today. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my terminal window. We're going to run sudo apt update and then as soon as this finishes up, it only takes a couple of seconds, we're going to run sudo apt upgrade next. So we'll go ahead and just enter that sudo apt upgrade command and let that run. Now I've just updated this system so it should only take this one a couple of seconds as well. Now, as of the time of this recording, I am having issues with Chromium starting when called from the command line. So because of that, and this may not apply, this, this issue may be resolved at some point in the future, but because of that issue that I'm experiencing right now, which I'll show you guys in a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and install Firefox. So we do that with sudo apt, whoop, apt install Firefox hyphen ESR and we'll go ahead and press return and I've already got this installed so this is also only going to take a couple of seconds but we will need that to overcome the current issue with Chromium. Now that we've got everything updated and we've got Firefox installed let's go ahead and head over to this GitHub repository. This is the Pi Weather Station repository and I'll leave links to this down in the description below. Once we get here, we're going to simply click on this code button right here and we're going to copy this line of code. Back in our terminal, we're going to run git clone and then we're going to right click and just paste in that address that we just copied. We'll go ahead and press return and give this just a couple of seconds to download. Now, I will just go ahead and clear the screen and run the ls command, and you'll see this new directory right here, PyWeather Station. So we need to move into that directory with cd space pi-weather-station. Go ahead and press return. I'm going to make this screen a little bit larger for us here. The next command we want to run is curl space hyphen lowercase s uppercase L, space, the web address right here, forward slash setup underscore 14 dot X. Then we want to give it a space, the pipe symbol, which is this uh, vertical bar here, another space, pseudo space, bash space hyphen. Go ahead and press return and give this just a couple of seconds to get installed. Once that's complete, we need to get Node.js installed. So we'll do that with sudo space apt install Node.js. Go ahead and press return, and again, give this one just a couple of seconds. Next, we want to run npm space install. Go ahead and press return. And the final command we're going to run is npm space start. Go ahead and press return here. Everything is installed at this point. We will need to do some configuration though. So you'll notice that it has told me that the Pi Weather Station version 2.0.0 has started on port 8080. Now, it's also going to try to launch the Chromium browser. The problem is, is it hangs right here and it will never display the page correctly. And this is where I told you we're going to bypass this in a few minutes and use Firefox instead. 
uh, but we can just copy this local host right here for the time being. I'm going to open a new tab, paste that local host colon 8080 into the new tab, and press enter. And that should load up the page here in just a second. I'll go ahead and close that first instance. And you can see that it has indeed started. Now, here's where we've got to go and get a minimum of two API keys. And we're going to walk through that here in just a second. I'm actually going to show you how to get all three of these. The maps, the weather, and the geolocation. For the first API, we're going to go over to mapbox.com. And you'll need to go ahead and sign up for an account on this site. Now, I'm not going to pull mine all the way up because I don't want uh, to reveal my public token, but right down here at the bottom, you will be able to see the beginning of my key. So we need to go ahead and copy that information, and then we would paste it into this site right here. The next API key that we need is the weather API. For that, we're going to head over to tomorrow.io, Again, go ahead and walk through setting up an account here, and you'll find yourself on a screen like this one. Now, we can't just copy the URL. What you actually want to do is come down here where it says API key equals, and you're going to copy everything after that, excluding the closing quotation mark. Once you have that information copied, you will go ahead and paste it into your weather API key right here. Finally, let's head over to locationiq.com. Go ahead and give it your email address, log in. You don't need a password for this one. It's going to send you a link for it in your email. You will follow that link to get your API key. Once you have it, you're going to go ahead and paste it into the geolocation API key. After you've hit saved, it will take you back to the browser. And it took mine uh, probably about uh, 10 or 15 minutes before everything populated in here. It just takes a little bit of time when you first create your API keys. While we're waiting on this to load, let's go ahead and take care of a few more things. So I'm just going to minimize both of these screens here, and we'll open up a new terminal window. Now, the first thing I want to do is the display resolution is completely wrong for this particular monitor. So let's go ahead and fix that first. So I'm going to run sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt. Go ahead and press return. That will bring you into this window here. Let's come down here to where you see... Uh, frame buffer and frame width. If you have a pound sign in front of it, we want to remove the pound sign in front of both of those. And I'm going to change this to 600 and the first one to 1024, which is the resolution that matches my monitor. Let's scroll on down. Look for this line here, HDMI force hot plug equals 1. More than likely, you will have a pound sign in front of it. And you just want to remove that so that that text shows white. Once you have that complete, let's press Control and S to save it. And then Control X to escape out of it. Now, those settings will not take effect until we reboot. And we'll get back to rebooting here in just a minute. The next thing we're going to do is create a startup script. That way, everything will load for us when the Pi is booted up. So I'm going to create a new text document out here on the desktop, and we're just going to call this start-weather. And I'll go ahead and press OK. Now I'm going to right-click on that file and choose Text Editor. Now I will try to leave this information down in the description below, but it may not be possible. Sometimes YouTube is a little funny when I start trying to enter code uh, down in the description. So if I can't get it entered in there, you will just have to type it off of the screen here. So go ahead and pause the video. But let's walk through what's going on with this script. The first line you see here is called the shebang line, and it simply tells the system that we're using the bash language. The next two lines that you see here are simply comments telling us what the script is doing. On line 6 right here, you see that we're moving to the Pi Weather Station directory. 
and on the following line we are executing the npm start command which is the command you saw us run just a few minutes ago in the terminal and then we put the ampersand out here at the end so that the script won't stop right here but we'll go ahead and continue running the next part of the script now the next thing we're doing is we're going to tell the script to sleep for 30 seconds and the reason we do this is it just gives the weather station server time to load up correctly and it will also go ahead and start the chromium browser now because of the way chromium is hanging up right now the next command I'm running is sudo kill all chromium hyphen browser and what that's going to do is that's just going to stop the chromium browser that the weather station tries to load for us automatically we're sleeping for an additional two minutes and then this following command is telling the system which display we want to use and then it's going to call Firefox hyphen ESR in the kiosk mode and go ahead and load our web address for us which is localhost colon 8080. Once you've got that information typed up let's just go ahead and press control S to save that file and let's go ahead and close that. Now we need to make this script that we created executable so in our terminal we're going to run cd space tilde forward slash desktop. That'll move us into our desktop directory if we run the ls command, you'll see that new start weather script that we just wrote. We're going to make that executable with chmod plus x start hyphen weather. Press return. Now if we run the ls command again, you'll see that that script is in green, indicating that it is executable. Now let's go ahead and check on our weather station and see if it has loaded that data. And it does look like that it has loaded up. So here's the radar with my location centered on the screen and then the other information over here on the right. If yours doesn't load after uh, say 10 minutes or so, you might want to press the refresh button right here in the browser. Now we've got one more thing to set up so that everything loads correctly on boot. So the next thing we're going to run from the terminal is going to be crontab space hyphen e. If this is the first time you've run cron, you're going to need to choose your editor. I choose nano because, well, it's the easiest. It says so right there on the screen. All right, let's come down to the very bottom of this file. And we're going to put in this command here. What this does is it tells the system at reboot, I want you to sleep for 20 seconds. Then we give it two ampersands. We give it the export display equals colon zero. That tells the system which display we're wanting to run. We give it a couple more ampersands. And then we give it the location of our start hyphen weather script that we wrote. Now, one thing to note right here, you will not use KM4ACK after home. What you're going to use is your own username for your Pi. I'll show you how to find that in just a second, but once you've got this information entered, you want to press Control S and Control X to get out of it. Now, if you just simply from a terminal type, who am I, and press return, it's going to tell you your username which is the same information that comes before the at symbol here on the command line. So where you saw me put in KM4ACK while ago in cron, you want to substitute that with your Pi username. Now that we've got everything finished up, let's go ahead and reboot the Pi. Once the Pi has rebooted, you'll notice that my screen is a lot smaller now in VNC. That's because of the resolution change that we made to make the display look correct on this 7-inch monitor. Also, it's going to take it about 3, maybe 4 minutes for everything to load correctly. You'll see that it's already starting to try to load the Chromium browser. We'll give it a second here and our script should go ahead and kill the browser for us. Now, it takes it, I believe, two more minutes after the Chromium browser has stopped. The system is simply waiting. Remember, that's that uh, other sleep command in our start weather script. 
So after two more minutes, we should see Firefox load up and display the screen correctly. And there you have it, guys. There's your weather display running on the 7-inch screen being powered by your Raspberry Pi. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.